This week's Parsha is Parsha Bishalach, which is the 16th Torah portion or Parsha in of the Torah. And in this week's Parsha, continuing with the theme of the past couple of weeks, we just see so many different events transpiring in this Parsha. One of the first things that happens in this week's Parsha is the Jews have finally left Egypt and Pharaoh decides that he made a mistake, that he shouldn't have let the Jewish people go. And so he takes an army and decides to go after the Jews and to pursue them and to bring them back in a sense. And the Jews at this point, they arrive at the, at the sea and they, you know, they're staring at the sea and they have to get to the other side to get to safety. And God creates this great miracle for the Jewish people where he causes the sea to split. And commentators suggest that not only did he cause the sea to split and that they could walk on dry land, but that normally when you think of a sea, you have sort of sea level and then a steep incline as you get deeper and deeper into the water. And then on your way out, you know, it would come back up a steep incline again. And so not only did God make dry land and make the sea split, but that he made the ground sort of become elevated so that the Jews could walk without that steep incline at the beginning, which was a big help, I'm sure, and a big miracle in addition to the sea splitting for the Jewish people. And so the Jews are able to cross the sea, and as the Egyptians are pursuing the Jewish people and they catch up to the Jewish people, the sea closes on the Egyptians and lets the Jewish people out in safety. And eventually, so all of the Egyptians die and um, their bodies wash up on the sea shore where the Jews are now camped. And the Jews see the Egyptians who are dead and they finally realize that they're really free. Because if they hadn't seen the Egyptians dead on the seashore, they might be fearful that the Egyptians are going to come after them, pursue them constantly. They are going to have to be in fear and that they're going to become slaves once again. What's wonderful about this is that the Jews sort of realize this great miracle that God has done for them, that God has really freed them. And the Jews sing a song to God, a song of praise. And they sort of go through the story of this amazing thing that God did for the Jewish people. This is the first sort of song of praise we see like this in the Torah. And um, it's something that we say every day as part of our prayer service in the morning. So the next sort of big event after this is now the Jews are headed to the land of Israel. They spend 40 years in the desert, but this is just the beginning. And sort of their journeying and their living, their dwelling now in the desert. So their fear becomes, where are we going to get food from? We're in the desert. And God for the next 40 years, the solution is that he provides them with manna. So manna, we don't really know what it is. Some commentators suggest it could taste like a honey cake, but what it is is that God provided the Jews every single day with a portion of food. Now the portion that is used in the Torah is described as an omer, and commentators suggest that's 43, sort of the volume of 43 eggs. So a pretty sizable portion of food. And that was the Jewish people's sustenance during the day. And everybody, whether they're young, old, male, female, child, whatever it happens to be, everybody got the same portion of food, which is kind of a miracle that everybody was able to eat the same amount. Because if you have a little child and you know a grown man, they're going to have different appetites. But somehow this volume was perfect for each person. And there were a lot of miracles surrounding the mana, but sort of the main thing that the mana brought about was that the people had to have trust in God. They have to trust in Hashem and that Hashem was going to provide for them every single day. So how the mana works in a sense is that the Jewish people would wake up in the morning and there'd be a layer of dew all over the ground, which is how it is still for us that we wake up and there's dew in the mornings. And when the, dew, when the sun melted the dew, the Jewish people would see the mana. And what's kind of beautiful about that in a way is that in our own lives, God often presents us with these miracles, just like manna, but they're covered. We can't really see them. They're covered by our whatever our equivalent is of the dew, and that it's not until the sun melts them or it's not until something is revealed for us that we're able to see these miracles or things happening in the way they're supposed to happen that sort of God brought them about. Um, it's very similar to the manna being covered with dew that often we are blessed with wonderful things and we don't even realize them or recognize them. But Going back to the manna, God would provide, so the Jews would wake up and after the sun melted the dew, they would see their food for the day and they'd be able to collect their portion. If they didn't take enough, God would magically make it so that they would have that exact portion 
an Omer and if they took too much the sort of leftover portion would either go rotten or it would sort of disappear again to be the correct portion. And so the Jews always had to have this portion of food. And I had to instill a trust in them. It's kind of, it does take trust to believe that your food's gonna be there every single day. And uh, that was for six days out of the week. On the sixth day, they were supposed to collect a double portion of food so that on Shabbat, they wouldn't have to go out and gather food. The, Hashem didn't want the Jewish people working for their food on Shabbat. So the Jewish people had to trust that when they you know, took that portion of food on Friday, if they usually, if they would take extra food, it would become spoiled overnight. But then on Friday, when they took their double portion, it was still going to be there the next day to feed them, to sustain them through Saturday, through Shabbat. So the whole way that God created manna and the way that manna was going to be delivered to the people was a way of trust. It was a way of saying to the Jewish people that Hashem was always going to provide for their needs. And that was true for the 40 years that the Jews were in the desert. Hashem didn't once forget to put manna out. They always had their food. It was regular. It was consistent. It was always there when they needed it. And I think that's really the lesson we can take into our lives that, you know, there might be times when we're, you know, we're worried financially or we're worried about just how we're going to be able to provide for something or how we're going to be able to make ends meet for something. Um, but Hashem is always going to provide for us, even at times when things get uncomfortable. You know, the Jews at different points were complaining about not having water, but Hashem always provided for them. He didn't let them die of thirst. You know, there might be times when, when we'll be uncomfortable in our lives, but Hashem is always going to be there to provide for our needs. We have to have that faith and that trust in God that it's always going to work out. He's always going to lift to the layer of dew and reveal to us our miracles, our mana. And so that's the lesson I hope we can all take away from this, just that we should have faith and we should be, take comfort in the fact that God will provide for us when we need it. So I hope you all have a wonderful Shabbat and a great week ahead.